Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Northwest, North, Southwest lead on voter registration. Knocks the federal government as over extension of uh, strike. Rumpus over plan conduct of the council polls in Oshun. UBN names Alawuba GMD elevates other directors. Intrigues as Amechi Akwabio civil battle for control of NDDC. Kaduna residents flee as gunmen abduct 50. Wow. Explain surge in crime, Minister challenges security agencies. And uh, police beef up security in Oyo, Undo, and Ikiti. Okay, the major headline. Yes, I got that. So, INEC is saying that um, as of now, we have a total of 96,303,016 voters registered and um, to vote for the upcoming elections. And um, they give us like a breakdown of the regions right. and the numbers that they have. And the very top is the Northwest. And we know that the Northwest is made up of, you know, states like um, Sokoto, Kano, Kebi, Katsina, Zamfara, Kaduna, and Jigawa. And also the very next is the Southwest. Um, they also say that at the very top for the state singular, um, Kano State is the highest, followed by Lagos. But I don't know if it was a mistake or my math's not working well. They say it's 569,103 for Kano, and then they say 585, 629 for Lagos, which is higher. 585, right? Mm, I, I think I, yeah. yeah. So I don't know yeah. if they mix it up or, <coughs> yeah, right. that's what they say. So, so in addition, even these numbers. Yeah. You know, I guess we would know how um, how people That's vote. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. All the permutations now will come up. But they've talked about the numbers of new voters that have registered, and the, and then let me. Uh, I think this is important. They mentioned that there's a fake online site that's come up that's been oh. urging Nigerians to enroll for voter card registration. INEX says that it's fake. It's not affiliated to them at all. Wow. It has been closed since um, July 31st, and. Um, yeah. Nigerians should be careful. So, so for, compared to the last election, I think it was 84 million okay. that registered. Mm -hmm. So now we have quite a number of new registered voters. That, 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 sh that can swing anyway. So mm. hopefully they now get the cards on yeah. time. Mm. I just wish they came out on time to do this registration. They did so now. Now. Over no, yeah. Yeah. now. People but, came out when the um, online yeah, registration yeah, started. Yeah, a lot of young people, people new registrants came out. But yeah. yes, a lot of people haven't. Mm. Still. Okay, another, st yeah, another story. So the yeah. Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has extended its over five-month-old rollover strike by another four weeks. This is another sad story. And they said it's going to be taking effect from 12 a.m. Uh, Monday, 1st of August. Now, according to the president of ASU, Professor Emmanuel Osodike, he announced this in a statement on Monday, and um, that was after the NEC meeting, National Executive Council meeting of ASU, saying that they need to give the government enough time to meet their demands, since it seems like they are working on snail space. And you know that the um, committee set up, that's uh, Nimi Briggs committee, uh, reviewing the salary of the lecturers. They had come up with a re um, recommendation before and submitted to the presidency, but it was rejected, so they had to go back to work on it. Now, parents and other stakeholders are really very upset about this, saying that they're not even going to be trusting, uh, not just, um, not trusting, um, just the government now, but also ASU. And ASU is very unpatriotic by deciding to go for another four weeks uh, strike. No matter what happens, they can s resume school and continue on their negotiations, mm. not insisting that everything must be met before they resume. It means they are not paying attention to the students who are still sitting at home. Mm. It's a very, I don't really know who would get involved in this to get this sorted. It's really painful. Oh, another story? Yes, I was going to take the story about the NDDC. I've been following up the story since um, 20, 2019. There was a corruption case brought against the past um, managing director. Off, 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 off your mic. Uh, yes, <laughs> the managing directors, uh, Mrs. <laughs> and also Mrs. Ibim Semir um, and Mr. Um, Insima Ekeri. They were arrested by the EFCC for being involved in a 47 billion naira scam. And I had to emphasize 47 billion naira scam because what that would have done in in, in um, the Daja Delta region would be huge. So they've been having since 2019 interim board managing the situation and people have complained with the Daja Delta that they need to put in a substantive um, managing director. Now the crisis is, the quarrel is between, is Apabio going to be the, is going to be chairing, um, being on the board or would um, Amechi be the one, each person is vying for um, strong, strong hold on the Niger Delta place. If you remember, 
um, people are saying that Amechi might be getting that opportunity because he stepped down from being a minister so that he could contest for the, um, for the presidential, um, to become a presidential candidate, and they might be compensating him with this based on his relationship with the president, his closeness to Cabal Villa. When I, saw, I read the story to the end, and I'm wondering at what point are they talking about the people of Niger Delta? The people that are complaining, the, the, the health condition of people saying Everybody's that... Everybody's a reporter's perspective that you're reading. So yeah. This is one reporter's mm. perspective. So this is the story. Mm. That's, that's, people of Niger Delta, yeah. whichever person gets to the place, ensure you monitor what is going on, that okay. they follow through. Let's move on to the punch. Plan the tax, police strategize, and SCDC wants as terrorists infiltrate South. Legal tussle may threaten multi-billion dollar eco-Atlantic city project. Lagos residents lynch mentally ill alleged invasion of property. We didn't increase petrol price, marketers did, says federal government. Health workers fault non-payment of new hazard allowance. Bari lacks ability to tackle insecurity, Castina NNPP chairman says. After a 168-day strike, also issues four-week extension. Week PDP BOT meets Wednesday plans peace panel and UBA Goodness, this is Tony Limit looks like he's not even in this country at all. Uh, <laughs> like, he doesn't even live in the economy of the country. He's not touching his face. He's <laughs> his posture <laughs> fire. He, he doesn't even live in this country. Mm. This guy is just in a different mm. world. Super, mm. uh -uh. super, super. I wonder anyway, how his wife and kids look will be at him, feeling you know? yeah. Six children. I mean, I call him on a social media. I call him on the number. We're talking about the animation. Let's go. The guy just to have his face. He's just saying, no ring, do not say. Fresh. Peace of mind. Mm. This Nigeria. Money is good, my people. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's find a story. Yes. Yes. Let's find a major headline. Yes. No, I have yeah. a human, human interest. interest. Story. Story. Very sad story of a mm. young man, 23-year-old, Chigozi Gideo, for, um, sadly died July 31st after being lynched by a mob. He had gone to spend an, some time with his friend in um, an area that says it's opposite or jail military cantonment, and that, um, sadly, <coughs> this boy has some psychological issues, and sometimes he behaves you know, out of character. It says on this particular day he was sleeping, they were sleeping, and he woke up much earlier than his um, host, and they're walking, wandering about, and then jumped over the fence into a compound. The people in the compound were screaming and shouting, and then he jumped into the neck. So everyone just gathered around him, accusing him maybe uh, of stealing or something, and before you know it, they were hitting and beating him. His friend realized he wasn't there, heard the noise, went there, tried to appeal to the people that this is his friend, that's He's not feeling well. Mm. And they put them together, accused him of being an accomplice. They said while they were hitting him, the friend ran away. Anyway, they took cutlasses, machetes oh, to him. Sadly, he died in hospital. <sighs> so the family is asking for you know, justice. Um, the police so far have been able to arrest about four suspects. And even one of the suspects showed um, um, one of the cutlasses that was used mm. on the poor boy. Yes. Oh, God. So, it's that's really a mob action. <clears throat> Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing points. You had a story? This yes. Evening. So the federal government is yet to commence the implementation of the increased hazard allowance for health workers seven months after its announcement. Uh, they said that the federal government had announced December 2021 that the hazard allowance will be increased, which is applicable to health workers in all healthcare facilities across the country. And that was put in a circular December 22, 2021. Now, according to, uh, first of all, they said the hazard allowance was reviewed to a flat rate that ranges from 5,000 to between 15,000 and 34,000 for health workers on the COHES salary structure while doctors on commerce had theirs reviewed from 5,000 to between 32,000 and 40,000. But health workers across the country are confirming to uh, the punch correspondent that they have not received anything, it has not been implemented. And they were expecting that at least before the end of uh, July, they would have seen it reflect in their salary, which they have not gotten. So they said they are going to be having a meeting, and in two weeks they would decide if they are going to be taking an industrial action or not, because the government needs to pay this house that allowances. So on the backdrop of all the security challenges we have in the country, the NSCDC is warning that we should ensure that we profile everybody that we hire, especially because we shouldn't hire fleeing terrorists. According to him, they had actually uh, arrested a suspected Boko Haram commander working as a security guard. 
Where? At a residential building in Ijai, area of Abel Kuta. Mm. Wow. They were able to use intelligence to find him, and they, they were trying. His objective was to plant cells within that region to infiltrate. And according to him, they are also working to get other of such commanders who have also are coming around. So we should be very careful. And the reason why they were able to catch <coughs> this guy was because he came through a company, and they were able to profile him, and then to find out his source. So. Which I'm, I'm even scared because I just just got out of the house. Mm. But um, so we have to profile and ensure. However, um, the PRO of um, the of Lagos um, State Police here, Lagos State Police Command, Benjamin Hodei, said that on Monday they had several meetings to strategize on how to uh, forestall any attack. But right now they just Lagos just have nothing to worry about because everything is under control and they are ensuring that they're putting all hands on deck to ensure the safety. Of, Niger, of, of Lagosians especially. But hey, we have to be very security conscious at this time in hiring people, fleeing terrorists. Be very careful not to hire fleeing terrorists. Hmm. And Let me make tell sure you the story of yes. the real estate, uh, my industry. As I saw it, um, they said the legal tussle might tie up um, assets within the Eco Atlantic. The company, a real estate company called C Global Energy Limited, are the promoters of a, a place called Ocean City Lagos Project. They got approval from the former president of. Um, the former president, President Olusha Gobasanjo, um, around at, at May 2003, for them to reclaim about 350 hectares of land from the Atlantic Ocean for, as an extension of the Amadou Bello Way in Victoria Island. Um, however, another company known as, they, they call this the Ocean City, another company, the one that we know, Energix, um, got approval from Lagos State Government, also from the president then in 2005, to in, in, in order to resolve the crisis of barbage and the water spilling in, they were also meant to reclaim some land. Now the question is that the Sea Global Energics is saying that Equa Atlantic is en has encroached on about 44 hectares of land initially allocated to um, Sea Global for their, um, as part of their own 350 hectares of land. I, I know that he said he'd written to the Minister for Works and Housing that... Um, um, but the former governor of Lagos State, Fashola, to help resolve the issue. But the question is, this is now, a lot of banks, international companies are putting their investment into Equa Atlantic, American and this embassy doesn't, the American Embassy is also building their, they um, have their building there. This doesn't speak well for further investment coming into Equa Atlantic. If there is a case of likelihood of toss, land tussle, nobody will want to buy until the situation is resolved. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm hoping okay. that this Let's is not good for business at all. Quickly to Daily Sun. Bloody day in play two, Taraba as terrorist strike. Um, IPOP issues stay away order against Igbo politicians. Majority of senators in support of impeachment move against Buhari's Bokachua. Asu Dash's hope of Bastis' resumption extends strike by four weeks. Rivers Abia communities reject Sahara energy on OML 11 operation. Farm in Buhari gives marching orders to Naseni. Protests work Abuja over insecurity. We don't fix cut off Max's jam. Which story are we starting with, ladies? We start with the sad uh, major headline, Bloody Day in Plateau. Oh. Um, so, oof, the story is that gunmen suspected to be Fulani headsmen on Sunday night um, attacked a village called, um, yeah, got the Chol village in Vuang district. Um, this, they said they came in about 7 p.m., and this family of eight. Um, Mr. Pam Gyang, his wife and six children were killed by these bandits. Uh, other people were injured as they were shooting <coughs> sporadically. Um, the spokesperson for the community said those who were injured have been taken to Von Christian Hospital. And this is coming just 24 hours after in Wase local government, Plateau State still, you know, 18 people lost their lives um, as a result of the clash between bandits and vigilante group. And then go to Taraba State. On Sunday, three were killed, six abducted in Joe Romanu town. Over so it just again. seems over like over a lot of the spokes, a few of the spokespeople that have spoken from these different communities just say that they don't feel like government understands what's really what's going, going on. In on? fact, um, the representative for just south, just east, he says he's among those who have, you know, put down their um, support behind the impeachment of the president if nothing is done concerning the killings and, you know, banditry and terrorism going on in our country. Really sad. <laughs> Let me instill within the insecurity um, space. Um, Senator um, um, Adamu Bokachua yesterday revealed that a lot 
of senators, that majority of senators elected on the platform of the All Progressive Party are in support of the impeachment of the president for failure to tackle the, um, the security challenges. They said every one of them, um, there was a closed door meeting. And in, in the private meeting, many of them agreed before it even became public. The APC, APC um, um, senators <coughs> agreed that it wasn't 100% unanimous, but the majority supported it. He was speaking at, on a national television interview. He said it is not a question of the party per se. Exactly. What is happening is that People. we in the legislative arm of government have tried all within our power except one thing in terms of, face, in terms of, um, um, in terms of uh, dealing with the challenge. And he said, we have engaged service chiefs and other security personnel to find out what the problems are yeah. and how we can bring solution. We've tried to find solution. We, have, we, we go ahead and advise the president. Yeah. And, and when we realize that it is not working, yeah. the mm -hmm. situation is getting worse. Yeah. Even the financial situation of the country is not improving. Yeah. We have said, we as one arm of the government yeah. might be limited, but we can go do ahead something. to so, do something. Yeah. So um, I'm looking democracy. forward to seeing That's how this would go. Because I've said that this is our legend. What, that, what that does for us? It even lets Nigerians we trust mm. that this government this is the system actually work. Mm. Somebody must check the executive. Somebody mm. must. You can't continue like this. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 uh, so, the election is too powerful. I'm so powerful happy they won't come late though, but we're happy that they're waking up. Mm. Mm. Somebody must wake somebody up. Mm. You know, Elrefai cannot be the one waking the guy up. Mm. Somebody must wake him up. Mm. He needs the waker in his life. He needs the waker. I like that. We gotta send this up. We gotta send him up. Wake them up. Let me take this still on insecurity. See, that's all we're talking about. Mm. Uh, a group called Guardians of Democracy and Development Initiative are asking the president to sack the National Security Advisor, sure. uh, Major mm. General Babagana Mungunum, and the Defense Minister, Major General Bashir Magashi, saying that both of them are incompetent and that the, that the defense, according to them, said the defense minister is incompetent, sack him now, Magashi must go, we, we say no to incompetence. And they were, they were saying that because he had, the, uh, Magashi had initially said, that people are tired and beginning to gravitate towards self-help. And they said, no, that's even understating the situation. According to them, they said, the truth that Nigerians are not just getting tired. We, have so we are suffocated, frustrated, threatened, apprehensive, completely uncertain about our safety and that of our loved ones. We cannot continue this way. And both NSA and the Minister of Defense must resign or must hmm. be sacked. So it, it has gotten to that point yeah. where you can't, you just took a story, a whole family of eight. Yeah, Who's going gone. to fight for them? Mm, it's gone. And Nobody. it's... Nobody. So it's, yeah, so it's quickly, really um, alleged uh, threats by terrorists to invade Abuja and um, a lot of um, residents are panicking all over Abuja. And so IPOB is saying and calling on Igbo elders and politicians, saying you people should not run home without an Namdekanu. <laughs> you must bring him as you are planning to run Seriously? home. Abuja right now is looking like it's not safe, and he, they are believing that most of the politicians want to come back home, you know, to settle because of that. said, you must come back to Namdekanu, or else when you want us to listen to you when the jung something about the jungle happens, we will not listen to you. Mm. So it's a warning to... At the politicians to still fight and see how they can get an MD back with the band released unconditionally. We have to wrap up, we run out of time. Oh, wow. I wanted to really take a story. Yo. We have to run, unfortunately. Oh. We'll take it tomorrow. Yeah, she'll take that, it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh yeah, yeah, wrong, wrong. Okay, so the donor harvesting uh, with the equity story. Okay. Um, well, information. Is he still in prison? He's still, he's still held in detention, but the conversation now is that the man reported that he's an orphan. But um, um, mm -hmm. the son were able to find his parents, find the oh. school, his primary school and secondary school records to show that he's actually 21. He finished secondary school. His parents are alive and well. He's not an orphan and he's not 15. This Ew. would help. Uh, hopefully. Yes. That's just mm. one side. Mm. The other That's side is all we can <laughs> take <laughs> on front page review. Two. When we come back from what's our hot topic of the day, stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back.